If you're trying to send a program to your machine from your laptop via RS-232, I'll tell you just how to do it. I'm the CNC repairman. Are you the central belt? I'm gonna show you how the Niagara Falls is full of power. First, a quick story. I started in this industry pretty young. My dad was a CNC tech and I grew up building this exact cable, actually. I think I was 10 when he drew out the pin out and showed me how to crimp all the wires. So I've been building these a little while. I have a whole video about how to build a cable if you wanna know. And then I grew up a little more and I started helping with phone support. Customers would call and wouldn't know how to use the converter and I'd walk through on the phone how to load the driver and check the COM port. And we were using refresh your memory software and then we were using DNC or was it PC, DNC, now we're using DNC for you. Over the years, we've just picked the software that has the best support. Predator, there's a whole bunch of different plugins that people do RS-232 communication. That's not what this video is about, but I wanna share to you how as a tech, I go and troubleshoot RS-232 problems. You'll figure that out, so you run into that issue, and then you'll also know, how do I send a program to my machine? What should the baud rate be? all sorts of things like that. So you need a good converter. This is a key span uh, trip light converter. There's a bunch of different converters. A side note, man, converters have caused issues with grounding. I know this one shop that would have this problem where the machine would just hang up in the middle of the program and it, we changed boards and software and then finally traced it back to a really old converter in his laptop that was plugged in and if it wasn't plugged in, it would machine would run fine. So weird stuff that I've run into. You go to a machine, I usually do, and the customer says the RS-232 doesn't work. Or one scenario is they get a used machine and they want help setting up RS-232 because they've never, they don't know anything about it. So I download some software on their computer. There's several different free softwares you can get. I sell them a cable, teach them how to build the cable, or they string the cable and I put the ends on it whether it's one of these manufactured machines or a different manufacturer, the cable is still the same. So what is RS-232? It's an old data rate that's serial data rate that sends bits, ones and zeros to the machine. And the machine has a button that says send or receive RS-232. And I'm not gonna go into the nitty gritties of the data communication, just gonna kinda gloss over it and go, how do you make it work? Cause that's what people call me for. I go into their shop, they don't really care, they just want it to work. The settings are in the settings page. You page down four or five times, it starts at setting 11. We can change these baud rate settings, which is how fast the data is sent with the left and the right arrow keys. Usually 9600 standard. The speed, the faster you go, the higher quality cable you have, the tighter in the hood the, the leads need to be, and the length that you go. So if you're gonna go, I don't tell people to go more than 200 feet and you better slow your baud rate down. If you're going 25 feet, you can crank the baud rate up and is this sitting next to a bunch of ethernet cables and power cables or is this kind of by itself? So that makes an effect, there's crosstalk between the wires. So back to here, if, if we're to set up the settings, let's just say, 9600 is pretty standard, hit enter. Uh, even is the parity select, stop bits are one, X on, X off, and the RS-232 data bits is seven. That's standard, that will work. If you try to change this to like RTCS or DC codes or X modem, X on, X off is the easiest. That's hardware handshaking. Um, like I said, you can Google this and find out lots and lots of good information. These other stuff, they're a bit more complicated and they require loopbacks and they require software to be set up more correctly. It's easiest just to do X on, X off. So if you set up those settings and you set up your computer, get it working and then figure out how to go. Now, to complicate matters, some shops that have lots of machines have a serial hub with 10 ports and then they have a network with a networkable software so any computer can send to any machine. And that just makes it way more complicated. It, when I troubleshoot, and I, I've done this a bunch, remember the first couple of jobs, I was there working with another technician, kind of apprenticing, training. And so we go into a shop and I don't, I don't really know. I know how to build the cable. I'm not that familiar with this. And the older tech goes, all right, talks to the customer and he says, yeah, I'm having a problem. I can't communicate with this new machine I just bought. And so the tech goes, all right, he pulls out his laptop, 
pulls out his known good cable, his known good converter, plugs it into the back of the machine, changes the settings, and makes sure that he can receive on his computer. So we go to list program, we come in here, we select a program, hit send, down here at the bottom it'll say send, and then it'll say serial send done. Did it show up on our computer? That's the easiest way to troubleshoot. Can you send from the machine to your computer? Because your computer software needs to have these settings like the percent sign, whether it strips out certain characters, whether there's a delay. So it's easiest to troubleshoot from this to here. If you can receive a program from the machine, okay, part of the system is working. Now the chip that does the RS-232 on the machine has a transmit side and a receive side, and I've seen one or the other fail. These were running in a, a it's a true story. The wire went out of one building in a conduit to another building that was the office, got hit by lightning. The lightning hit the conduit, ran down, hit the ground, jumped in, blew the transmit side out of the, and receive side out of the machine board and fried the computer. So we go in there and I wasn't me in this, this that sense, but I heard about this story and they couldn't get the machine to work. And so they got the machine finally to work by putting in a new board with the laptop. Then the computer wouldn't work. So I've seen a lot of bad things. We, we as repair techs are always in on the worst story. So check that a computer works with the machine by sending it to the computer. Then you've got it and you've got it in the correct format. A new shop owner who gets a new machine, who has no idea how to do this, makes a program, reads some form somewhere, has it all formatted wrong, keeps trying to send it to the machine and it's not working. Same thing with a floppy USB. Save a program to it, then change the name or delete the program and try to send it back. That will just save you troublesome, annoying, why isn't this working? That's an easier step. So. We've got programs here. We're gonna plug in the 25 pin on one end to the machine and we're gonna plug in the nine pin into our connector. I don't know why, this is just the way machine tool builders have done it for years. Like into the 80s, they had a 25 pin here and the serial pin plugged into old, old computers. You can online buy a nine pin to a 25 pin serial straight through cable. They're junk, they're the wrong pin out. And I've seen guys buy the female to male adapters and then have this string of adapters where they're trying to go from 25 female to 25 male and then you can get an adapter down to the serial connector. It won't work, it won't work, dude, it won't work. I've walked into places and seen six adapters in a row. Dude, you, you need a proper serial to USB, you need a proper one. I'm not trying to sell you parts, I'm just saying, I walk into places and I just chuckle because, oh yeah, that's not gonna work. So this plugs into the back of the machine. Let's just do it right now. This simulator is not set up the same as your machine, but it'll be around back, usually above the electrical cabinet. I'm gonna plug this into here. If you've never had one of these installed, you're gonna wanna make sure you get the drivers correct. And if you got a computer that doesn't have internet, you're gonna to need to go find the key span drivers. Let's start by just going to the device manager and we're gonna just look and see, okay, under COM ports, let's see. Come on. Okay, COM port 10. That's really critical because whatever RS-232 DNC software you're using is gonna, you're gonna to need to set up the correct communication port for this. And if you turn your machine, your computer off, and you turn it back on, that COM port might change. Or if you plug it into a USB, I've seen that. So check the COM ports. Now, I'm not sponsored or anything by the different softwares. I just found this software is good and it has good support, a couple hundred bucks. You get it for free for 30 days. Two different free softwares you can get are this DNC for you for 30 days and then PC, DNC, I like that software. It has a nice terminal window. But there's a couple other terminal softwares you can get online for free. So this is just one example that I found works. We're gonna come into here and we're gonna go to configure the CNC and we're gonna set the baud rate to be 9600 the way it was here, the data bits to seven, parity even, stop bits one, the flow control, X on, X off, if this is set up right, you're gonna be able to receive a program from here to your computer. Then 
If you go into the send settings, that's where you could have issues where it strips or adds double percent signs, or it puts in extra characters, and that, that can cause issues sending. So that's where I want you to play with it. Now, when you've got the COM port set up and you've got everything ready, you're gonna to need to put your software in receive mode. Now, I like to just put it in a blanket open terminal receive mode so I can see anything that's coming from the machine. And sometimes if you've got the settings wrong or you've got a problem with your RS-232 chip, you're gonna get garbage. Then you know immediately I'm getting something, the communication lines are working, we just gotta get it set up correctly. So let's go ahead and put this at receive all from CNC instead of just receive a certain program. Now it's just gonna be waiting for the data. When you put this software, whatever software you have to receive or transmit into receive mode, put it into receive all from CNC, come to your CNC, hit the send RS-232 button, and it'll tell you what program it's sending, then it'll pop right up. Now this is where it's very dependent on whose software. It may wanna give it a name, it may not care, but you can see the percent sign at the end, and then if I wanted to just save this, I can just say um, text. Now, I'm not really following the right rules. You should name it the name of the program with the O dot NC. Remember the file that you are opening has nothing to do with the name of the program. The name of the program is the O number at the beginning. Back to this, sending and receiving. If you wanted to send that program, we just sent it it's here. That means the communication line is working to the computer. Now the other way around, you got to finish the program, you want to send it to your machine and run it. You want to have a program that's empty, so you don't want to send a double program to the machine. So let's just go ahead and erase this holes program. I'm going to hit erase program. Okay. Now I'm going to go to all because it, it will either select a single program or I can just, it will accept everything. So I'm going to hit the receive button. Usually this is the case where you have to go to your machine, hit receive, walk back to your office that's hopefully air conditioned, hit send, go back to the machine, see if it showed up. So here it is, I'm gonna hit send, and I'm gonna say send what's in the editor to the CNC. There's lots of different ways. You could send a new program, you could send whatever, so let's just hit send what's in the editor, then I'm gonna hit continue, and Boom, 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 it says it's loading, serial received done, it popped up. Lots of people have trouble with this, whether it's their settings, whether it's their machine, whether it's the cable, whether it's the converter, the percent signs, things that are stripped, that's sending and receiving RS-232 on an old machine with a smaller screen. It could be a little bit different if you're doing this in a machine with a PC-104 card, you'll have memory, different things. You'll go to memory, enter into memory, then go down to all and click receive. So this machine right here has a PC-104 card. It's a newer version of software. I'm just going to enter memory, gonna come down to the end, and then I'm gonna hit receive, and then it says waiting for data. I could drag the cable over, but I know it works. It's the same if you wanted to send it. You could just select a program, hit send, and there you go, it's waiting to get a confirmation that the computer's plugged in. It's part of that handshaking. The last thing is that if you have a newer machine with the latest version control, which, let's see. This is gonna be over here. Let's see. Oh. It's gonna be exactly the same. Let's get through here. You're gonna go to list program. This machine could have a USB network hard drive. If you have the send and receive buttons on your control, you can send and receive um, waiting for data, or if I wanna send one, hit send. NGC machines built after 2014 or 15 do not have RS-232, period. They only have networking and USB. So the tricky part is a few shops were really frustrated when they got an NGC machine and they couldn't tie it into their big RS-232 network that feeds all their machines. I don't know of a workaround. RS-232 is great, especially on these old controls. When you're trying to run big programs and you don't have enough memory, you can go into list program, go into MDI and DNC, and then send a program. Now this video is not about DNC right now. I'll make a video all about that. but just trying to overview and give you an idea. 
This is how the RS-232 works. You need a specialty cable, a high quality converter, the software, the correct settings between the computer and the control. Don't go longer than 200 feet. Have good quality cable, good ends, and practice sending from the machine back. I have seen the chips on those boards go bad on both the processor and on the video card. And depending on the software configuration, the electronics, the RS-232 plug, where the other end of this plugs into the control, and then it has, I got one right here, it has the little dongle card where this either goes to the video card or this either goes to the processor or to the PC-104 card. Depends on the software version. If you've tried everything and you still can't make the RS-232 work, we do repair all the circuit boards in these machines, so you could send it to us, we could test it. It's not this card. People call me, I bought one of these on eBay to fix my RS-232 problem. It's got a couple of resistors. It's not this card. So don't buy one of these thinking. There's two of them in your machine. One for RS-232, one for auxiliary. If you really think this is the problem, swap them, but I've never seen this fail. So that's the whole overview. If you have more questions about file transfer, anything to do with that, we got lots of videos online or give our store a call at CNC Replacement Parts. We ship overnight daily, try to help you get your machine up and running. If you like this video or I missed something, I know there are probably other ways to do this in other versions of software, especially with like DNC from a USB or from the hard drive. I, I don't know everything about these, so I would love the feedback, but I try to figure out all the different ways to do it and help you get you to run your machine faster in your shop. So comment below. I want to know if there are other free RS-232 softwares and um, let me know if there's something specific. We're trying to make more videos and uh, we'll just, we'll let you know. So thanks for commenting. Please comment, helps our algorithm. And uh, if you have a friend who has a CNC, please send him our channel and our store. That'll help us grow and make more content and help more people. Take it easy and uh, don't go crazy with RS-232 because I know I have. <laughs>